Hey guys, Cliff Gray with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides and True Hunt. Today I'm going to go over what's in my kill kit. And really what this is, is it's whenever we harvest an animal, I keep all the items that I need for that process in one modular unit. And the reason I do that is because when I'm out scouting or doing something unrelated uh, to a full-blown hunt, I don't want to always have this in my pack. I want to be able to just take it out, set it outside. And then also, when I am going to go and guide a hunt, it's very easy for me to look on the shelf see it marked right there kill kit there's actually a little blood on there too to indicate that's what i need i grab that dry bag and stick it in my pack so what i'm using here is an outer pack is actually a, a dry bag and this is a ultralight one uh you can i think to you uh sell some ultralight dry bags but so does or and that tends to be what i use um they're just economical for for uh for what for what you're looking for okay so let's just dig in here first thing i have is I have some game bags, okay? These happen to be caribou game bags. Uh, they're, they're a synthetic material and they're lightweight. Um, so this, this is kind of more for like a backpack hunt. I've got a whole video that covers different game bag options that you can check out and that's one of the options. So I have game bags and I'll have just enough for the species that I'm gonna hunt, okay? So if it's a goat hunt and I know that the guy's gonna want a full body cape uh, yeah, to come out, with the uh, after the harvest i'll make sure that i have a couple bags for the quarters and then uh, one bag for the full body cape i don't i won't have enough enough game bags in there for you know uh two bull elk and a cow elk or something like that a lot of times i see that i see that amongst guys and i see that amongst hunters don't put a bunch of extra bags inside your kill kit it's just extra weight make sure you have the amount of game bags that you're actually gonna need for that animal and that hunt so let's just go through the, the smaller items. I keep a pair of gloves, okay? And the reason I keep these in here is these are kind of universal across species. For ungulates, uh, goats, sheep, deer, elk, I generally don't wear gloves. However, if, if a bull elk's got a big abscess on his neck or something like that and I've got to cape him and I might get exposed to that stuff just from the nasty kind of stink aspect of it, uh, I might wear gloves to just keep that off of me. Um, but I do wear the gloves on all predators, okay? So bears, lions, coyotes, if somebody wants a coyote skin, something like that, always will wear gloves. So I keep a pair of those in my kill kit. I keep some 550 cord, and uh, this is useful for several things. Um, you know, one of the real common ones for the, for the mountain species, but usually for elk, you know, super high country alpine deer, sheep and goats and goats is really the big one a lot of times you'll find yourself using 550 cord to support them while you work on them like a lot of times bull elk will die in these kind of hellhole real steep dark timber slides it's nice to just tie them up with 550 cord while you're working on them you don't have to worry you know as you take one quarter off the bull rolls or whatever same thing with goats and sheep way up in the rocks um, sometimes you just want to secure them with that i've used it a lot of times for that okay and the other thing is is you can hang your quarters with it okay so i always keep a good chunk of 550 cord nicely nicely wound up don't have it a scatter mess in your kill kit because if you do that whenever you go in there to just get one simple thing you're going to end up uh, with with this all over the place okay so 550 cord i keep some baby wipes okay and over time you know you'll have them in your kill kit they will they they will tend to dry out even if you have them in a plastic bag so you might you know re rehash them every once in a while but even if they do dry out on you just a little water from your uh, water bottle you can put on there and there's a couple of things that they're useful for one after you're done you know just the fat and grime that you get on your fingernails those sort of things it's, it's not hygienic by any sense of imagination but um you know at least get that stuff off of you particularly fat you know fat tends to stick to you so you can get that off um get the bulk of it off but the other thing is is it'll clean, you can use these to clean up the animal, okay? So you can clean up the, you can try to get the blood off the, the muzzle uh, of an animal. You can clean off the blood on their lips. You know, those, those cosmetic things. It does matter for pictures, um, you know, to take nice pictures that, that everybody enjoys. Try to clean up kind of the mess um, that, uh, that you'll see on a lot of these animals when you, when you come up to them. So you can use them for that. And then for goats in particular, a little moisture you can actually clean those horns and it makes the horns look a lot a lot larger. Uh, it really does significantly. As a matter of fact, when I see pictures in magazines and stuff, I can see when a guide has cleaned up those horns. I kind of notice it because it's something I do, but it does make a big difference. A dull horn 
on a goat because they're not very not very long it just doesn't shine it doesn't have as much kind of kind of kind of i don't know what you want like kind of a, a burst from the picture so it looks smaller okay and you can add you know other other animals too you can clean up their antlers with that and kind of put a little sheen on it and the pictures will look a little bit better so those are handy for for those purposes and you'll see a lot of this stuff is is multi-purpose which is nice okay then in an inner bag here i've got some more gloves a little extra 550 cord and then in here what I always carry is I actually carry some just this is just basic uh, this is this is really leather uh, leather sewing material but you can use any thread you know preferably a real light color that's going to blend in but and then I have a, a leather needle in there okay a curved one and what I do with that on on any animal to avoid this kind of you, you'll see this in a lot of a lot of pictures there's kind of we're a goat or sheep or elk. Elk are real bad at jaw, la, ha, flopping down. And then big rams are actually pretty bad too. They'll flop their mouth and the picture looks ridiculous. And it just, it, a real, a real beautiful, majestic animal to have a photo of that kind of always bums me out when I see it. So what I do is I always sew up, sew up inside in their palate, the lower one to the top, right? Uh, under the lip so you can't see it. And the first thing I do is you can look it up what I'll do is the first knot I'll do is a surgeon's knot. It's basically an overhand knot with several twists. I pull that and that's gonna pull that tight and then I do another knot over that as a, as a square knot closure. And then I cut those off and then uh, that animal will have a, a very natural closed mouth look. And it sounds uh, kind of crazy to some people but it makes a big difference in pictures. So that's something I always have handy. And what I do is I just stick that in a chunk of cardboard so it doesn't, doesn't poke a hole in in all my other gear so guys that's uh, pretty much it you can see i keep it pretty minimal um but to the point i make sure i have all the gear that i need for when that harvest does come so i hope you find that helpful and, and maybe you adjust yours a little bit on that on what i've got in mind see you guys thanks